Okay. So let me make sure my levels are up here. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't see me. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm just ensuring that I'm on here. Don't see it. I figured that would have happened, eh? Okay. So I think we're on. <laughs> All right. I think we're on now. All right, guys. <laughs> Good night. I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm on. So just give me a second here. I don't know why this is doing this. Okay. So let me make sure I'm on on all of my channels. And then we could go from there. All right. So. Kevin Ewing. Just give me a second, guys. I'm just trying to ensure that I am on here. And I need to know if you guys can hear me before I get started here. Okay. I'm just waiting for someone to say, hey, Kev, I can hear you. <laughs> so let's try another site. And in case you're wondering why I'm coming at you so late at night, I had to wait until a lot of the traffic died down on the internet so that I could have no interruptions. So I'm just checking all of my Facebook pages. I'm checking uh, my YouTube to make sure that I'm on. And then we will get started. But I just want to make sure I'm on and that uh, there's no interference. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this right here. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. I can hear you. I had to wait until a lot of the traffic no, died out. No, we don't need to hear you, Kevin. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so I think I'm on live, all right? So I'll keep monitoring in case I have any issues. Now, like I was saying earlier, the reason why I'm on this late is because I'm having major difficulties with my internet provider. They have some uh, work that they've been doing ever since the hurricane back in, what, June of last year, somewhere around there. And my, my, <clears throat> my numbers are very low. My uploads are like, what is it now? Uh, two megabytes per second, stuff like that. So obviously, if I'm on during the day where it's heavy traffic, then it's difficult. It's difficult for for me to have a solid, reliable streaming. So therefore, I decided. In fact, I was checking the levels for the past couple of nights to see the best time to come on to avoid heavy traffic and interruptions. So therefore, I decided to come on at. Two, my, my watch is saying two, two fifteen a.m. Saturday morning. Now, I don't have a problem with this, but uh, once you guys can hear me, and once we don't have any interruptions, then I have absolutely no problem with this. So I'm gonna get right into it. I posted a video on my Facebook page, and it was a result of a <clears throat> one of my followers had emailed me a question and they asked if it was possible if a person's destiny could be hijacked or their blessings could be stolen from them. And I said to them, yes, that is that is very, very likely and, and believe it or not, very common, <laughs> very, very common. So I decided to do a, a teaching on it so that people can have a an understanding of it, but the angle that I'm going to take it from is from the biblical principle in terms of how it can happen and how the enemy also uses that same principle 
to hijack the destinies and the blessings of others. Many people are walking around here today living lives that they were never ever uh, designed to live. God did not call them to live a defeated life. God did not call them to have six, seven, and eight marriages. God did not call them to be drug addicts or whatever it is. Uh, the Bible says, and I think Jeremiah 29 and 11, somewhere about there, and it says that his thoughts towards us are good and not evil and to give us an expected end. <clears throat> it is God's desire to assist us in enjoying our lives, but in order for that to happen, like I always say to you, we have to follow his rules. Everybody has a pre-ordained uh, destiny. I quote the scripture to you all the time in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, and it is clear. It says, Blessed be the Lord our God, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in uh, heavenly places, and has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So this scripture, like many others, is giving some empirical evidence that we were, we have a destiny in place. There, and a destiny would be us becoming and fulfilling what God has purposed us in the earth for, what was his original plan as to why we are here. Whether we were made to be doctors, lawyers, priests, whatever, whatever it is. <clears throat> Unfortunately, like I said earlier, the possibility of your original being hijacked or stolen is very, very possible. But even worse, be stolen from you and given to someone else or someone can take it from you and, and have it for themselves and basically living the life that you should have lived, receiving the blessings that you should have received. Now, I know it sounds really, really crazy, so I'm going to say from the onset in this teaching that in order to understand this teaching, you, you, you have to look at it in its origin from a spiritual perspective. So with that said, and just to give a little uh, foundation, yeah, I want us to go to first, uh, Corinthians, first Corinthians uh, chapter 2. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 2 here. Let me put up my little Bible thing here. And I hope you guys uh, I hope you guys have your Bible with you. Tonight is going to be a very, very interesting night. I'm looking at my YouTube folks right now. Minister Margaret Rose, Cools, uh, Cara Johnson, Teresa Simplice, so Simplice, I guess, Annette S. I guess all you guys are hearing me well. <clears throat> so let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. All right, and we're going to read. Uh, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read from verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read from verse 12. And it says, Now we have received, listen to this carefully, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Now before we go any further, Paul in his letter here to the church of Corinth is giving them some very heavy, in my opinion, spiritual warfare insight. And he's identifying something here when he said, now we have not received, we being the believers of Jesus Christ, when we became a Christian, when we accepted Christ, sorry, he says, we did not receive in taking Christ as Savior the spirit of the world. So Paul is basically saying here that there is a spirit that resides in this world that is clearly anti-God that more or less conforms us to do the things of the world. Now, <clears throat> this may seem like this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I, I really, it's going to make sense to you. But I just want to lay down the foundation so you have a complete understanding of what I'm talking about. So Paul is saying, we have not received, now we have received not the spirit of the world. 
Instead, he says, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And that's powerful. Because now he's saying also that outside of the spirit of God, the things that are freely given to us, we would not become aware of it. So that it stands to reason that people who are not believers of Jesus Christ, who have the spirit of the world upon them, they are not fully or knowledgeable at all about the things that Christ has or God has secured for their lives. And this becomes the benefit when they come on board as believers of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to rush tonight. I'm not going to get loud. I'm going to take my time because I really, really I want you to get this. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely, circle that, the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, I could, I could take a whole left field with this freely part. Healing, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, prosperity, whatever it is, God says these, th these are the things that are freely given to you. You do not have to pay for it. You don't have to sow a seed. You don't have to spin around. You don't have to high-five your neighbor. You don't have to go to a church to get it. You don't need a pastor to be a covering to get it. No. He said the Spirit of God, this Spirit that you have taken on, that you've adopted, this Spirit of God is going to make clear to you the things that are freely given to you by God. So it's clear. You would not know these things outside of having the Spirit of God. In fact, it is revealed as a secret. And I, I just want to just want to back up a little bit here. Let's just to bring some clarity to this. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29, coming off the heels of uh, the scripture I just gave you. Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. And that word secret means something that is hidden, something that is mysterious. So the scripture is saying the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. So there's some things we would never know. There's some stuff we will never ever in this life know. So he says these things belong to God. But those things which are revealed, revelation, belong unto us and to our children forever. Now, going back to the scripture that we just said, it says that we were not given the spirit of the world. Instead, we were given a spirit from God so that we will know the things that are freely given to us. All right? So he's saying here now, the secret things belong unto God, but there are certain things that God has revealed unto us and our children forever. Why, though? Why is he doing that? Why did he make a decision to reveal some stuff to us, to unravel, to pull the cover off of some secrets. It says that we may do all the words of the law. So what is that saying to us? The scriptures are clearly saying to us that in most cases, if God does not bring revelation to you about the scriptures, all right, that is the, the, the things that he's revealing, then it's going to be difficult for you to follow the law or follow the Constitution, which is the Holy Scriptures. And this is why with some people who are not biblically inclined, I don't have discussions in terms of arguments with them. I'm not going to discuss the Bible. I'm not going to have conversations like whether Jesus was white or black or, or Christianity is the white man our religion, who enslave our ancestors. I, I, that's nonsense. You see, one who has the spirit of the world, that's the level they will always be on because they need spiritual revelation from God to understand the things that were freely given to them when they came on board 
uh, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, those who will have those conversations, let me tell you the spirit of the world that Paul was talking about. Okay? So let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to look at chapter 2. And then we're going to start from verse 1. And we're going to end at verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to begin at verse 2, but well, verse 1, sorry, and then we're going to end at verse 2. Now listen, I'm just looking to make sure if I have any, any uh, issues with you viewing me. That's why I'm looking over here so many one says I cannot hear you or whatever, I would know. So Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 says, And you have he quickened, who is this you? He's, he's talking about. But he's talking about the church of, of Ephesus, the Ephesian church. He says, you have he. Who is he though? You who Christ have quickened. And what does he mean by quickened? To make you alive in your spirit or to reconcile you back to Jesus, back to God when you accepted his son, Jesus Christ. And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, when you were living the life prior to coming to Christ, he said you were dead in your trespasses and sin. But listen to verse 2. Verse 2 of Ephesians 2 says, Wherein time pass, ye, who is this ye he's talking about? He's talking about the current believers of the church of Ephesus. He says, In time past, you walked according to the course of this world, before you became a child of God, before you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, going back to 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12, you had the spirit of the world upon you. And he's about to identify that spirit right now. Wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince, circle that word, because he's talking not just about a spirit, but a very high-ranking spirit. In fact, he's speaking about a principality. Because a principality is not a person, instead of a, it's a position that is held by a prince. <laughs> I love this. I love it. Yeah, I love this. I love teaching. I love this. <laughs> so listen to this now. Where in time past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. Then he identifies him even in more detail. This prince he's talking about, he says the spirit, that's what it is, that now work it in the spirit of the world that he said in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 12, that God did not give you when you came on board in accepting Jesus Christ as your savior. This spirit is the, is the prince or the spirit of disobedience, meaning a spirit that is defiant to go against the laws of God. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, Kevin, man, what you say making make a lot of sense, and I like it, and really, really getting up there, but the tide is in, though. But we, we're going to tie it in. We're going to tie it in, but I just need you to, I just need the latest foundation because I'm going to show you how a person who was born to be great, who was born to be a doctor, a lawyer, a preacher, a pilot, a person who was born to be a football player, a, a cricket player, a, a whatever player, how that person's destiny, how that person's original destiny could be hijacked or stolen from, stolen from them, and they have no idea. Many of you watching me right now has had it happen to you, and you don't even know. You're living a substandard life in comparison to the life God has called you to. And my aim tonight is to show you from the scriptures the principles that were used against you to hijack your destiny, to hijack the blessings that were put in place for you. Remember what Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 4 says, Blessed be the Lord our God who has passed and he has already done this, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places or in the spiritual realm. So God, he had already sorted out our destinies before we even got here. Before we got here to the planet, before we were birthed from our, our mothers, God had already sorted us out. 
And then he said, okay, I'm, I'm going to pick Mary and John. I'm going to get Kevin, and, and, and Kevin is going to be a preacher, not just a preacher. He's going he's to be a detailed teacher for my word, and he's going to ensure that my people have clarity as he teaches my word. So God has given me this gift, not when I arrived here. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ephesians 1 says that this happened before the first year. It says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places on the spiritual realm. And, and verse 4, I think it is, it says, and he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Not only have I sorted out your destinies, but I've chosen, chosen how I'm going to place you in my body. Bef I'm doing this before the foundation of the world. This is powerful. This is powerful because even in this teaching here, we weren't the only ones who had our destinies uh, pre-programmed. Jesus himself, his destiny was put in place prior to him coming in. In fact, in the book of Revelation, I believe it's 13 or somewhere, somebody who knows the scriptures will notice, it says that, I think it was John or whomever, somebody said that they saw G the, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. They were referring to Jesus. So his destiny was to be crucified. That's what he came here for. So I'm building a foundation to show you that our destinies are, were already in place prior to us being birthed into the world. This is going to make so much sense to you because now when we look on the flip side to it, we see now while people of the occult enslave the lives of those that come to them for solutions and remedies and so-called healings, they enslaved their children. They said, you want a healing? You want to be rich? You want to purchase luck from us? You want us to make you the manager on the job? Okay, well, we need you to sacrifice your daughter, sacrifice your grandchildren, sacrifice your eldest son. It really means to, to sell them. And selling simply means this, to take property, okay, that it belongs to you, and give it to some deity in exchange for what you want from them. So you want to be wealthy. And they say, we're going to sacrifice your, we want you to sacrifice your son. Now, the truth is, when you sold the child, you were literally, when you sold it to them, you, you were literally changing their destiny from a God-intended destiny, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, that has now been pushed to the side, and it's now going to be replaced with an evil destiny. So that child is prone for hardship. That child is prone for the spirit of rejection, anti-marriage, uh, uh, you name it. The child now becomes, because bloodline relative sold the child into the kingdom of darkness. So there was an exchange of their destiny. But the one who's doing this, for the most part, don't even realize it because the idea with these people is to get the one seeking the solutions to focus on what they want and not so much on what they're doing to the person in terms of what they want to get. I'm going to, I'm going to show you all of that in Scripture. And I, I, I'm bringing it, and we'll always bring it from a biblical perspective, because I don't ever want to sound as if I'm just pulling stuff out of the air and just throwing it at you. I want you to see it for what it really is. All right? Now, I want us to go to, but before we go there, if we go to the book of Genesis, we go to the book of Genesis. In fact, I'm trying to see which one I'm going to take you to, 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 to first. In fact, let's go to Genesis 25. Let's go to Genesis 25. I was trying to delay this, but let me just jump straight into it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25, and we're going to read from verse 29 to verse 34. Genesis chapter 29, 25, sorry, and we're going to read from verse 29 to verse 24. Now, I, I want you to follow me so far. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I don't, I don't want to, to get you confused, all right? I've, I've laid a foundation. And that is the foundation we're now going to build everything upon. We have discovered that everyone has a destiny. 
everyone has a purpose to, for why they are here. Now, whether they believe in God or not, whether they believe they're here for a reason or not, no matter where they are in life, if they're still alive, if they're still existing, okay, the, the, the destiny that has been assigned to them still exists. Now, that does not mean that they're participating in that destiny, okay? But nevertheless, they were called to become something. They were called to do something in the earth. God didn't put them here to have a vacation for the rest of their lives. There is a reason why. And whatever the reason is God has placed you here, that is your destiny. All right? Now, in Genesis 25, beginning at verse 29, it says, And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint, or he was weary, he was tired. So his brother Jacob, because remember, Esau and Jacob were twins. However, Jacob would have been, well, we could call him the youngest, because Esau was birthed first, then Jacob came out holding his heel, according to the scriptures. So the, on this particular day, uh, Jacob was fixing some pottage, or we could call it some soup, excuse me. Esau just came in from the field very, very tired. Verse 30 of Genesis 25 says, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me. Now remember who the eldest is, Esau. So Esau said to his brother Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint, or I am weak. Therefore was his name called Edom. This would have been Esau. Verse 31 of Genesis 25. And Jacob said, now this is very powerful. This is very powerful. And Jacob said, sell, circle that word, sell me this day thy birthright. Circle the word birthright. Okay? Now, we're going to define the word sell as well as we're going to define the word birthright because in defining them, it's going to give you a greater understanding of what's really happening here. Okay? Now, I said to you earlier that the word sell, in fact, I wrote something down here. That sell means to give or to hand over something in exchange for something else or to give the, the property or to give the ownership of something that you currently own and now you're handing that ownership over to somebody else in exchange for something. If I were to sell you my vehicle right now, the vehicle currently belongs to me, but you would like the vehicle, so I'm going to sell it to you, meaning that we are agreeing here, and this is the key with the word sell because it speaks of agreement. This is key. It speaks of a covenant. I'm going to give you this car for X amount of dollars. Once the exchange has been made, we came to an agreement, a covenant, and that covenant was fortified by you giving me funds in return. Now the, the ownership of the car has been now exchanged to you. Okay? Now, the next word there is birthright. Now, birthright back in those days... for the eldest son. He was entitled for the assets and so on from his parents, particularly his father. He was the one, no matter, it was never no breakdown in courts and the, the younger siblings and the outside siblings and so on. No, 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 no. By right, uh, Esau was entitled. In fact, I have in my, my notes here, birthright is a privilege a person has from birth especially as the eldest son. So with that said, let's go back to verse 31 of Genesis 25. It says, And Jacob said, Sell me, okay, this day your birthright. Hey, what are you saying in so much word? I'm going to give you this little bowl of Campbell's soup, all right? In exchange for which you are entitled to as the eldest son of our parents. 
whatever you are entitled to, we, we, we're going to agree. We're going to come in covenant. Now, why am I pounding on this? Because when you read the scripture, there were no signing of papers. There were no lawyers involved. There was no seal and, and uh, no notor notoriety, no notoriety, nothing by no lawyers. No, 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 no. What is happening here is totally spiritual, but real. Real in the sense that I will give you my birthright. I will sell it to you. When, I, when you give me that porridge, this day, this day is going to change my destiny. This day, whom and what I was supposed to become, I cannot become that no more. Because I made a covenant with Jacob that when he gave me this bowl of Campbell's soup, from this day forward, he is going to be the one now entitled to whatever the one who originally had the birthright was supposed to have. Jacob is going to get it now. I hope I'm making sense here. I I really hope I'm making sense here with you. I hope I'm making sense because what I want you to really lock in on on verse 31 of Genesis 25, there were no lawyers involved. They did not call uh, Papa, Papa Isaac, their father, and, and Mother Rachel and say, Mom and Dad, come here as witnesses. No. So what the scriptures are... Uh, 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 secretly saying to us or suggesting that everybody have the legal right to exchange their destiny and God will not stop you. I want you to hear this. <laughs> Everyone has the right. If they choose not to go according to the plan of God and they want to do what they want to, and it's happening every day. God isn't going to say, hey, no, don't do this. I went through all of this to make sure you become black. No, 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 no. That This is your choice. But know for certain that the decision that you're making, you are about to change whom you were called to be. Okay? When he made that covenant with his brother, Jacob, Jacob now is now the head Jacob is going to be the, whatever the anointing, whatever the blessings were assigned to Esau to become as the elders cannot happen anymore. Why? Because Jacob had swindled him out of it spiritually when the exchange was made. I'm loving this. Now, I just want to backpedal just a little bit because this isn't the first time this is happening in this particular family. Now, remember who Esau and Jacob were. They were the sons of Isaac. They were also the grandsons of Father Abraham. And Abraham had a similar situation with his sons. Remember, uh, Sarah and Abraham couldn't have kids. God visited Abraham in Genesis 12, as well as he visited him in 25 or 20 years later, which is recorded in Genesis 15. And God said, you're going to be a father of many nations, blah, blah, blah. So between Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, uh, I guess they thought God was taking too long. So Sarah, uh, Abraham's wife, suggested go and have intimate course with their uh, maidservant, Hagar. And from that union was birth Ishmael, which would have been the only and eldest son of uh, Abraham. Well, eventually Sarah became pregnant and she had a son. And guess what his name was? Isaac. However, God never recognized Ishmael as the one who is supposed to receive the blessing from Father Abraham. This is so powerful. This is so powerful because what you're going to also see in this lineage is a hidden generational curse 
where the eldest sons in this lineage never ever gets the blessing which they are entitled to. This is powerful. <laughs> this is powerful. This is powerful. Okay, so now let's look at, let me see if I can. I thought I wrote this down. Yeah, let's look at Genesis 25. Okay, Genesis 25. And let's look at, I think, verse 7 to verse 11. Genesis 25. And let's look at verse 7 to 11. Okay. Genesis 25 verse 7 says, And there, sorry, and these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, a hundred, three score, and fifteen years. And Abraham gave up the ghosts, and died a good old age, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Verse 9 of Genesis 25. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zoar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his. Who was his? Abraham's son who? Did he bless Ishmael the oldest? No. Mm -mm. Who did he bless? Isaac. God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well, Lahori, whatever that name is. So here it is now. Abraham is deceased. All right? He has, uh, God gave, and of course it came right out, Abraham had other children, these two boys. But God told him that the promised child would have been with him and his wife, Sarah. So even though Ishmael came before the promised child, that does not change the destiny God already had in place for Isaac. Now this is crazy because the custom was that the eldest child would get the blessing. And what is this blessing we're talking about? Well, the blessing is the covenant that God made with Abraham in Genesis 15, okay? When he, you know, told him to make the sacrifice and Abraham went into a deep sleep and God began to speak to the spirit and soul of Abraham as the coming events of what will happen to the Hebrew people that will all come through Abraham, right? So when Abraham died, this blessing was supposed to go from generation to generation, all right? So as you can see here, Ishmael didn't get it. Okay, which of course put some beef between him and his brother. Isaac now, who got the blessing, who was recognized by God, that he's the one who's entitled to it. He's the one that I've blessed as a result of his father in the covenant that not a blessing now is passed on to him. Now, Isaac is now getting ready to depart this world. Now remember earlier that we read in Genesis 25, that uh, Jacob was able to swindle his brother out of his birthright. But even though he swindled his brother out of his birthright, Esau still had the opportunity to receive of the blessing, the same blessing that was set put on his father Isaac, that same blessing was supposed to now go to Esau as the eldest son. All right? So with that said, Genesis 27, Genesis chapter 27, we're going to make some sense out of this. I hope I'm not uh, losing you guys. I hope I'm making sense. Let me look at some of these comments. Okay, skipping again, buffering. That's the horrible internet. Now, the good thing about it, I'm recording this straight to, so 
sorry, my SD card. So it's a separate feed from the live feed. So I'll be able to uh, inversion to this. All right, so, so no need to panic, no need to panic. I will upload the clean version to this, all right? So now, Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, okay, so he's basically glowing blind, so that he could not see, he called Esau. Who was Esau? Esau was the eldest of the twins, Esau and Jacob. He called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. So this is Esau responding to his father. Verse 2 of Genesis 27. And he said, Behold, now I am old. This is Isaac speaking to his eldest son Esau. Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now, therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out of the field and take me some venison. Go out in the field and get me some meat and make me some soup. That's what he loved. Verse 4. He says, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. So as you can see here, the plan was to bless the eldest child, Esau. Isaac is telling his son, listen, I'm getting ready to depart this life. I am about to take the journey to eternity. But before I die, I need to empower you with the blessing that was bestowed upon me that all originated when Abraham made a covenant with the God of the universe. Now I know is the time to pass this on to you. This is such a beautiful story. So this blessing was supposed to make this boy great, make him now the, the leader basically of the Hebrew people. And there were so much things that came with this, with what I call the blessing. But as you're about to see, something is about to change. The destiny is about to be high. Somebody listening to me right now. You, you are living a life that you were never, ever, ever called to be living. God had never assigned you to that husband, assigned you to that wife. He never assigned you to be living in such substandard. You did this on your own. You some way, somehow got your destiny hijacked. And primarily, whether someone did it by sorcery, whether you got involved with whatever it was, the spirit that caused all of this that I initially built the foundation on of this teaching that you thought had nothing to do with it was the spirit of disobedience that we discovered in Ephesians 2 and 2. That was the spirit that encouraged you to go against the laws of God. The laws of God, once followed, automatically guide you to your God-intended destiny. Oh, I love this. Lord, I love this. I am loving this. I am loving this. I, I see people keep saying here on YouTube that it's, it's, it keep freezing. Don't worry about that. I'm, I'm recording this also on the CD, on the SD, sorry. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to post the clean version. So don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about that. Okay, I'm going to hook you up. <laughs> so, the, so the scripture says here in verse 4 of Genesis 27, he says, And make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebecca, that's the name I said Rachel, but it's Rebecca. Rebecca heard when Isaac, who was her husband, spoke to Esau, his son. And, Esau, and to bring it. Verse 6 of Genesis 27. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, 
Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, and this is his mother, Rebecca, speaking to Jacob. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Verse 9 of Genesis 27. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goat, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as we love, such as he loves, sorry. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. So we're going to pause here at verse 10 of Genesis 27. And as you can see here, Jacob's mother, who favored Jacob more than the eldest son Esau, is now concocting a plan for an intervention between Isaac and his eldest son Esau. Okay? Because she wants to hijack the destiny of the oldest son and now cause it to be bestowed upon Jacob. And Jacob now wants this spiritual transaction. This is key. Once the spiritual transaction has taken place, there can be no going back on it. And this, this is so powerful. You need to get this. Let's just take a prayer point with your Father God, whomever is watching or listening to this message right now whose life has been hijacked whose destiny whose blessings whose favor and everything that you've had in place for them before the foundation of the world by the anointing of this message because your word declares that it is the anointing that break yokes i by the blood of jesus and the power of god almighty destroy every hijack destiny right now everyone that is that has has hijacked or stolen the destiny of someone else father i pray that you would supernaturally remove it from the one who stole it or hijack it and now replace it back on the one who you originally had it for every uh, son every daughter who's roaming the streets who is living a life below what they were called to be. Father, I pray right now that through them being, or, or you realigning them back to the original destiny, it will now put them back on course to who and what you have called them to be, and that according to your word in Joel 2, in, in 25, 26, where you say you will restore unto them the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palmer worm has eaten away. Cause their destiny, Father God, to be reinstated into their lives. Cause their destiny, cause them to, to, to realign them, Father God, so that they can become what you have called them to be in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, I, 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 I join my faith with that mother right now who's listening to this program, that father who has been so deeply uh, uh, hurt by the life of that son, by the life of the daughter, that clearly their, their, their destiny has been hijacked. That child you put through college, that child you have so much great uh, future expectations for, so much things you want to assist them with, and whether their destiny was hijacked by drugs, hijacked by uh, same-sex affairs or opposite sex, someone misled them, whatever it is, I am coming in agreement with you on tonight. I am asking God. I am beseeching the throne of God. I am boldly coming before the throne and asking God to intervene into your situation. Asking God to dissolve all the evil traps that this child, this person, this spiritual king that never Father, I'm asking you, Lord, to reinstate them with their original, reinstate them, realign them. Father God, I pray that you would expunge every form of wickedness in their life, 
that has uh, uh, contributed to them being derailed from their original destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak restoration right now. I speak restoration right now. I pray that the miracle working power of Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Mekadesh, that the power of the creator of the entire creation will rest upon that son, rest upon that daughter, rest upon that mother, rest upon that father, rest upon that person whose destiny has been stolen. And Father, I am begging you to reinstate them to their original destiny in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, I feel like praying right now. I have to, I have to because somebody needs to be set free tonight. Somebody needs to be, somebody will be set free. Someone is being set free. You know why? Because the scripture says in Proverbs 11, verse 9b. And what does it say, Kev? It says, through knowledge, that's what I'm giving you right now. Through knowledge shall the who? Shall the just be delivered. If you believe this word that I'm giving you tonight, don't believe me. Believe the word of God. Believe, say, God, I believe everything. Excuse me. I am convinced by it. Therefore, Lord, I stand and I position myself because your word says through knowledge, I am acquiring the knowledge right now. And you says through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Deliverance is my portion. Why? Because I believe the knowledge of God, which is who? The word of the living God. So deliverance is going to be your portion. Now you may say, Kev, but my child isn't saved, so I don't think that scripture goes to him. No, 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 no. Let's look deeper into the law. What does the law say? The law said, now because your child may not be a believer, but you, you are a believer, which makes you righteous. The scripture says, see, we, we got to get technical with the law now. The scripture says, same Proverbs 11, but this time verse 21. And it says, do hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Mighty God, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I am loving this. I am loving this. You're, you're hearing this? Someone is saying, but Kevin, I hear and I love what Proverbs 11 and 9b says it, but, but really it says for the just, you know, my, my child is on drugs or my child is in, in a relationship that's destroying his life or whatever. So Kevin, my child is in the righteous. No problem. Proverbs 11, verse 21. Do hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. B listen to part B, though. And this is for your child who may not know Christ. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So if you're interceding for your child, you are a believer of Jesus Christ. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus as a result of you accepting Jesus. God says this is, a, this is a clause and this is a benefit that I've instituted in my word. That your children, because of you, he says that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. You are the righteous, your children are your seed. And according to the word of God, you could put a demand on the word asking God, God, you promise that you will deliver my seed. My daughters are on drugs. My son my daughters are prostituting. My sons and my daughters are aimlessly roaming about in life with no form of direction. Father, I feel like a failure as a parent, but Lord, your word brings me comfort because I am righteous. You said that even if my child do not know you as Lord and Savior, but because I'm the righteous, you will deliver my seed. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just had to squeeze that in there. So let's go back to this now. Let's go back to this. Verse 8 says, Now therefore, my son, and this is, Re this is Rebecca speaking to Jacob. Okay, remember, they're, they're concocting a plan to intervene so that Isaac could bless Jacob instead of the eldest son, Esau. So verse 8 says, Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, 
according to that which I command I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from pence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loves. So Rebecca says, Now listen, you go get meat. I, I can fix this up. Okay? I know what he like. I was cooking this all these years for him, so I know just how to fix this. So verse 10 of Genesis 27 says, And thou shalt bring it to thy that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. So you see what they're after now. Isn't this powerful? Why is this so powerful? Because I'm trying to show you your destiny is far, is far more valuable than a house, than a car, than a job, than being the vice president or not a president or a CEO or a CFO. Those things, these people realize that in order to get those things, you need the blessing. So you hear what she's saying? She said, I need you to go to your father for him to bless you. Not go to your father to ensure that he leave the couple donkeys for you. Not go to your father so he can leave the plot of land. No, 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 no. What is spiritually being offered here to us or suggested that the blessing becomes the root of everything material and spiritual. Listen, she is not saying, listen, Jacob, I'm going to fix this for you. Your father is blind, so you need to go in and pretend to be your brother and ensure that he signed the lot over to you. Ensure that he signed the, the donkey and the carriage over to you. None of that is being discussed here. They are seeking something spiritual. They are seeking something that will become the root of future wealth, wisdom, uh, uh, notoriety, whatever. And what is that? The blessing. That which Abraham made the covenant with, with God that was passed on to Isaac, they got to now ensure that it come to Jacob and not to Esau. So watch this. I love this. I love this. I love this. So verse 10 again. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, preadventure or suppose, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Oh, you hear that? You hear that? He is saying or suggesting that just how daddy could leave a blessing to give me a good life, to give me a destiny that will flourish, my father also has the power to curse my life, to retard my blessings, to cause me to go in the opposite direction of what God has called me to be. Well, you all, you all listening to this? You, you, are you listening to the spiritual implication? Now, why am I pointing this out? This is the same way when you curse your little children. When you tell your daughter she will be a whore or a, the B word. When you tell your son he will live up the court steps. When you make these declarations, you are altering the destiny of your seed. Y'all better listen to me. Y'all better listen to the scriptures. He said, Mommy, what... What if daddy figure out this me and rather than me getting a blessing, he then throw my life upside down by pronouncing a curse over me. But what I want you guys to see is the revelation. Remember what the scripture says that we read in the opening of this teaching, uh, Deuteronomy 29 and 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things that are revealed, God is revealing something here to us. That nowhere in Genesis 20 is there any form of arguments, any form of rebuttal over material things. So what is Rebecca trying to intervene to do here? Things because this become the root, this become the track in which the destiny is laid out for this boy to go to to be a part of and to flourish in the future. 
Think about it. Read the scripture. There is no, there is nowhere where Esau, Isaac, Rebecca, or Jacob are fighting over property or fighting over material things. That's irrelevant. That they realize that those things are as a result of the spiritual blessings. I could get those things if I am spiritually rightly in alignment. Oh, I love this. Boy, I love this here. Yeah? This is such a powerful insight. The Bible says, my father, sorry, verse 13 says of Genesis 27, and his mother said unto him, watch this now, watch some more spiritual insight. And his mother said unto him, who was him? And his mother said unto him, which is Jacob, said unto him, this is verse 13, upon me be thy curse, my son, only obey my voice and go fetch them. My Lord, you all listen to this. You all listen to this. You all listen to this. <laughs> you all, did you all just hear what this woman said? This woman just said, and I'm trying to show you how blessings and curses can be hijacked, transferred, exchanged. She told her son, Jacob, if your father does figure out that that is you, whatever curse he pronounced on you, I will receive it. Wow. I didn't even know that could have happened. You see the spiritual insight. Uh, do you see the revelation that these, these, all of this is spiritual warfare is being revealed right here in Genesis. In Genesis 27, verse 13, Rebecca, the mother of Jacob, who she's trying to coerce to go and to deceive his father to obtain a blessing that wasn't meant for him, but was meant for his eldest brother Esau. And what did he say to him? She said, if your daddy curse you, I will take on that curse. I will have that curse transferred to me. My Lord, Lord, you're all hearing this? Because all I'm reading here is biblical principles. These are the same principles that the kingdom of darkness operate on. There are no two set of spiritual laws. There's one set of laws. And depending on how you lose those laws, you can use it for good or for evil. So she said in verse 13 of Genesis 27, and his mother said unto him, Behold, sorry, and his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse. I will take on the curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch them. Verse 14. And he went, which is Jacob, and he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, which was the meat. And his mother made the savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly remnant of her eldest son, Esau, which were with her in the house and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kid of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Verse 17 of Genesis 27. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who art thou, my son? Verse 19. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou biddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. So you see, he's now in the process of deceiving his father by pretending to be his brother Esau. His mother outfitted him with the goat skin, which would have made him feel hairy like his brother Esau. She prepared the uh, venison for the father which he loved. So everything was in place for Jacob now to receive the destiny that his brother Esau should have received. Watch this now. Verse 20 says, And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Verse 21 of Genesis 27. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near.
I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. So clearly Isaac was a little suspicious here. You know, he wasn't sure things wasn't panning out the way it should have been, particularly how he retrieved and made the venison so quickly, knowing that he had to go into the to the bush in the forest and, and, and kill this animal and then prepare it and so on. So in verse 23, it says, And he, which is Isaac, discerned him not, because, sorry, verse 22, And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. So the hands were now covered with the goat hair, so it would have appeared to be his son Esau. But he recognized the voice being that of his younger son Jacob. Verse 23 says, And he, which is Isaac, did not discern, meaning that he didn't realize that this was Jacob, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hand. So he blessed him. Oh, wow. So the plan worked. Isaac now convinced that, you know what? My suspicions has been satisfied. This is, in fact, my eldest son Esau. When the truth, it wasn't. And the Bible says that he blessed him. Now, this is powerful. Because what you're about to read, that because he gave him the blessing, he could not retreat on what he did. And this is going to become a problem in the coming verses. So, in uh, verse 24, it says, And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. So Jacob is lying because he's not Esau. Verse 25 says, And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord had blessed. Verse 28 of Genesis 27. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of the corn and the wine. So you see, he's speaking the destiny that was supposed to go to Esau. Jacob, whom have deceived his father, is receiving of this blessing. God, I love this because again, You've got so many people out there fighting, especially when it comes to when parents and stuff die and they have a bunch of kids or even two kids. But there's a lot of wealth, a lot of properties and securing their soul. But they're more interested in the physical things of life, which is going to come and go. So Jacob is now speaking life, speaking the destiny. He's speaking the his this. He's speaking the destiny that was supposed to go to Esau is now going to who? I, to, to, to Jacob. Jacob is going to live the life that Esau was supposed to live. Jacob is going to become whom Esau was supposed to become. Jacob will be great, but Esau will never, ever, ever be as great as his uh, brother Jacob. Why? Because he is being, getting or receiving the blessing that should have gone to him. So he says, and he, verse 28 says, Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of the corn and the wine. Verse 29, let me serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. You hear that? You, you, you hear how he's literally uh, navigating the course of this boy's destiny, Jacob, that is, whom he thinks 
is his son Esau. No matter, he said, no matter how many sons your mommy take on, no matter how much children I have, listen, you, they will all bow to you. Then he goes on, he says, Cursed be every one that cursed thee, and blessed be he that blessed thee. My Lord. Verse 30, And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet uh, scarce gone, out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also, and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. Verse 33 of Genesis 27. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that had taken venison and brought it me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Verse 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety, with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing. He has taken away your destiny. Your brother has stole whom you were supposed to become. Your blessings are designed for you to evolve in whom God has called you to be. And if anyone hijack, steal, or displace, uh, misplace your blessing, they're stealing, hijacking, and misplacing your destiny. Mighty God, I love this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now listen to this in verse 35. And he said, Thy brother came but subtly and had taken away their blessings. Verse 36 of Genesis 27. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he had supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he had taken away my blessings. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? Oh, I feel sorry for Esau right now. Two times he has been conned out of two things that were extremely vital to him, and it did not happen by the hands or the actions of a stranger, by not only his blood brother, but his twin brother. Now he's begging his father, Father, is there any remnant, any residual of the blessing that you could possibly levy on my spiritual life so that I could become great? So, so in verse 37, it says, And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Folks, I'm going to end right here because I'm going to do a part two to this, which is going to go into more detail. But what I want you to walk away from this teaching with right now is the spiritual underlying tone, the spiritual foundation that everything in this story is surrounding, built upon. It is the foundation. Nowhere in this story is Esau pining and crying out to his father, Father, at least give me 12 sheep. Excuse me, 12 sheep. Father, at least let me have the two tracts of land. Father, at least let me have the vineyard. Nowhere in there are you hearing this. Because wealth is in your destiny. Material things is in your destiny. 
Your destiny is what God has called you to do and to be. And those things aid you in getting to your destiny. You are not supposed to worship wealth. You are not supposed to go to church, give an offering, sow the seed or whatever it is, because you're rich in the end. You should not listen to preachers telling you that if you sow a thousand dollar seed, God is going to make you a millionaire. That, have, that is not who you are. Who you are is what God has called you to be. What God has called you to be is your destiny. We end right here. Father, I pray once again, I bring your people before you. And Father, I pray for the one that's weeping. You know, I, I hear it in my spirit. The one that is weeping, the one that this message is resonating to right now. Because everything that I've garnered from your word is fitting like a puzzle into their life. Father, bring restoration. Father, bring them to their original destiny. Father, break the bonds of wickedness, destroy the yokes, undo the heavy burdens and set these people free from the captivity of the spiritual cages that they have found themselves in. Father, everyone who has been sold by some relative or friend, everyone who has been, whose name, whose pictures, whose personal items, fingernail clipping here, Whatever is on whatever altar that they have been initiated to, they don't even, they are not even aware of this. Father, I am asking you by the blood of Jesus. I am asking you, Father God, as a person who is now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I am now standing in the gap for those that are listening and watching right now, and I am asking you to break the yoke, break the yoke, remove the spiritual blindness from them, Lord and to retrieve their destinies that have been stolen, however it was stolen, and now realign these people to their original destinies in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I am asking you, please, I beg you, I beseech you, I am asking for just how you intervened into my life many years ago, just how you took me off of that destiny of poverty, the destiny of being riddled down and, and beaten by sorcery and witchcraft by others. Just how you took me from the back of the line and bring, brought me to the front on my job. Just how you elevated me in my career. Just how you advanced me in my ministry. Just how you have made all of the financial resources made available. Just how you realign me to my original. I am asking you to do it for these people right now. I am asking you, Father God, Lord, to intervene into their lives. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, intervene into their lives and break the shackles, break the chains, break the feathers and everything that has held them back and that has caused them not to, 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 to join their destiny, not to be participants of their destinies, remove all the spiritual impediments, remove all of the stumbling blocks, Father, and cause them to be realigned to whom and what you have originally called them to be in the name of Jesus. I pray for that person right now. You have been going to college, must be for the past six, seven years and cannot complete it. Your destiny has been hijacked. I pray for that woman, that man who have failed in marriages, who have yet to meet the right person for them. Someone has altered your destiny. Someone is with the one that you were supposed to be with. I don't know how God is going to do it, but I'm asking the Lord to intervene and to satisfy you early. I'm asking the Lord to intervene and make the wrongs right in your life. I pray for that person right now who's been battling sickness that was a part of their destiny, but someone has levied it on their destiny. Father, I'm asking you to remove the sickness, remove the disease, remove the mental frustration, remove the poverty, remove the backwardness, remove the setback, remove the hate, remove the unforgiveness, all of these things which were a violation of the laws of God. And as we started out in this teaching, we identified that the prince of the power of the air was really the spirit of disobedience that operate in those who are disobedient. And it was through this disobedience that gave this evil the right to hijack, to delay, to steal, to rob these people of their 
destinies. But Lord, I'm asking you right now to intervene. Lord, I'm asking you right now, Father God, to restore. I'm asking you right now, Father God, to replenish. I'm asking you right now, Lord, to realign them to their original destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those that are watching me from Africa. I pray for those that are watching me from the UK, from the Bahamas, all over the world. Everyone that is watching me via YouTube, via Facebook, or whatever means, you might even receive this what's up from a friend months from now. The same God I'm praying to for these people, I'm praying to for you. That God will realign you to your original destiny. Every evil altar that your ancestors whom have sacrificed your destinies, Father, I pray that every contract, every covenant, every evil spiritual agreement that these people had nothing to do with, but only because of the bloodline they came through. Father, I pray that those contracts be nullified, destroyed, that every evil altar will be overturned and dissolved by the fire of the living God. Father, your word declares in the book of Lamentations, ancestors or our forefathers have sinned they've done evil but now they're dead but the current generation are left to carry their burden father i renounce father i reject father i divorce these people from every evil altar that is speaking against their destiny every evil altar father god that is speaking against their aspirations their ambitions their hopes every evil spirit that has delayed them and kept them back and caused them not to go uh, beyond a certain point I command it all to be dissolved by Holy Ghost fire and that this year 2020 beginning tonight will be the beginning of the best days of their lives ever father I thank you father I bless you father I honor you father I praise you father I glorify you tonight I magnify you tonight I worship you tonight for you are Jehovah Elohim you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Father God. Your word declares in Jeremiah 29, 11, you said that the plans that you have for all of us are good and not evil, and to give us an expected or a good end. Your word declares according to uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, it says that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places. You have already done it. Lord, now realign us to the original blessing. Just like how when Isaac blessed Jacob and he, what he blessed him with was a spiritual endowment that will cause him to excel, that will cause him to bring the right people in his life, to aid him in his journey as it relates to his God-intended destiny in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you that I can say I am on my original God-intended destiny. And in any area of my life, Father God, that I'm falling short, Father, realign me, precisely realign me, recondition me, do whatever you need to do so that I will remain on the path that you have called me to remain on until the day you call me home in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the persons who you just woke up. For whatever reason, they're listening to this. Let the power of God dissolve whatever evil seed has been planted in their life. Whether it was by a lover, a husband, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a wife, whomever. Whatever they have eaten and consumed. Whatever item they have taken. Not knowing that the other party had bad intentions. Not knowing that the other party wanted to switch or hijack their destiny. Father, what is whatever system, whatever they feel calling in their system, whatever has been tormenting them. Father, I curse it in the name of Jesus and I command it to be dissolved. I command it to pass out of them physically and even spiritually in the name of Jesus. Father God, make it clear to them. Cause that thing to fall. Cause something to happen with whatever was given to them, but was laden with sorcery. Cause some supernatural thing to happen so that they would know that this is the thing they need to get rid of. This is the thing that they need to set fire to, to dissolve the intent of it, which was the cause and their destinies being hindered in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for that grandmother. I pray for that witch, that warlock who have sold their children, who have sold the future generation, who has levied curses on them for their own selfish reasons. Father, I pray for that witch soul. I pray for that warlock soul. Your word declares that it is not your desire that any shall perish, but that all shall come to eternal life. Your word declares that we ought to bless those that curse us and to pray for those that despitefully use us. Everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone that is watching me right now, whose life has been hindered by a witch, whose life has been hindered by a warlock, whose destiny has been robbed from them, even if it is their blood relative, I am asking you, God, to intervene. I am asking you, God, to break the spiritual shackles, destroy the evil altars, overthrow and nullify every evil covenant that is speaking against the destiny of these people. Father, I command the covenant to cease and desist. I command the Holy Ghost fire to consume the contract, whether it was made in the 1900, 1800, 1700, however far it goes back. Father, cut the strings and chains of wickedness that has manipulated the destinies of these people and causing them not to be where they should have been at this point in their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray right now by the power of Jesus Christ. Father, your word declares that that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead also resides in us. Your word declares, Father God, that you have given us power over serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the devil and nothing by no means shall harm us. So therefore I speak to every coven, every witchcraft altar, every evil device, every evil wickedness that is coming against these people whose destinies has been hijacked and hindered, I pray in the name of Jesus that you release it now. I pray that that witch and that warlock will be tormented until they release, until they release the destinies of these people. Father, show them that you are God. Show them that there is no one else besides you. Father, we are asking you to intervene, to quit and shut down this nonsense indefinitely in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you. Father, I honor you. Father, I praise you. Father, I glorify you. Father, I magnify you right now. Father God, that person listening right now whose destiny has been hijacked and placed with a destiny of failure and placed with a destiny of backwardness and placed with a destiny of anger, that person who have, I mean, evil anger that is not whom God has called you to be, Women, God did not call you to be a bully. God did not call you to be a reject. Your destiny has been exchanged. Your destiny has been replaced by faith. I believe tonight that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob is about to intervene, is currently intervening in your matter and making the alterations from their spiritual realm and in short order you will see a drastic change in your physical life. Father, by the blood of Jesus. Father, by the power of your Christ, I come in agreement with that prophecy. I come in agreement with you have already ordained for this person before the foundation of the world. I believe, Lord, that because you knew they would have been delayed, you have placed your clause in Joel 2 and 25 or 26, where you said that you will restore unto them the years because you're restoring, because you knew they would have been delayed. You knew their destinies would have been hijacked. You knew they would have been exchanged. You knew their destinies would have been raw. So you've placed the clause in your law that even when they would have come back full circle, you said that you will make up, you will restore the years that the enemy has eaten away. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the privilege that you've given us to come before your throne boldly. I thank you that we don't have to go through a pastor. We don't have to go through a pope. We don't have to go through no preacher. When your son shed his blood on that cross for all mankind, you remove all of the impediments. And according to your word, we can now come boldly before your throne. I am coming boldly before your throne and I am praying for those who are in desperate need of a change, but no change can happen unless they now become in full alignment with destiny. Father, I pray for restoration right now. I pray for restoration right now. I pray for restoration right now with their destiny. Father, let the evil covenants be destroyed. Let the evil covenants be destroyed even now. Every evil covenant speaking against your life, let it be consumed by Holy Ghost fire. Father, your word declares that you are an eternal consuming fire. And so we are asking you, Lord, just like in the days of Solomon and Gomorrah, when you rain down fire and brimstone on those two wicked cities we are asking you lord to do a repeat but this time we are asking you to spiritual fire and brimstone over every evil altar every evil contract every verbal agreement that the tie up these people's lives that will have ensured sickness, poverty, backwardness, rejection, whatever. Father, let your spirit intervene and rewrite their history in the name of Jesus. Realign them to the original destiny that you have called them to live. You did not call them to a life of misery. You did not call them to a life of pain and rejection. This was never a part of your agenda. I stand in the gap for these people people right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth asking you Father God to intervene intervene right now intervene and bring a permanent stoppage to the backwardness and failure remove them from that evil destiny and replace them or realign them to their original destiny in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Father, I thank you right now. Father, I bless you right now. I believe everything that I'm asking you for, you hear us right now. I believe right now that the angels of the Lord, whom you have already assigned and commissioned to begin the restoration, to begin the realignment, to bring back to where they should have been. I thank you for those who've been in the back of the line for so long. Uh, you have already been advanced spiritually in the realm of the spirit. Time will now reveal, escort, and catapult you to where you should have been at this point in your life. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who do not know you as Lord and Savior to not live off the blessings of their righteous parents anymore, but to become a part of the fall of Jesus Christ and confessing their sins, repenting, and accepting you as their Lord and Savior to excuse me, take on now the full benefits, excuse me, of what you have put in place for them before the foundation of the world. Father, I bless you. Father, I honor you. Father, I praise you. Father, your word declares in Psalms 5 verse 12, you said that you will bless the righteous and with favor shall you encompass them as with a shield. Your word declares in, in, in Proverbs 3 and 3, it says that they must not forsake mercy and truth, but bind it upon their necks and write it upon the tables of their heart. And in so doing shall they find favor and good understanding before God and man. Father, that person or persons that has been rejected all their life, they they have the qualification, they have the skills, everything they have, but the evil covenants has blocked their destiny. Father, if it is ever a time they need the favor of God, I am asking you to read it upon them now and cause those doors that were once locked, shut, and sealed to be opened supernaturally by the command of your voice in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. Father, I honor you. Father, I praise you. Father, I glorify you. Father, I magnify your name right now. 
right now, Father God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that the angels of the Lord are on assignment, shredding the evil covenants in the name of Jesus, shredding the evil covenants by the blood of Jesus, shredding the evil covenants in the name of Jesus. And now realigning so thousands of people right now to their original destinies. I thank you right now, God. I thank you that they're being realigned. They're being realigned. They're being realigned, Father God. And that your Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of truth, will now become their navigator, leading them into all truth. In the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so excited right now. Folks, I, I, I'm going to end here tonight. I'm going to end here tonight. And like I said earlier, I, I was recording all of this on my SD card. So the, the live stream that's having all of the interruption, I should not be getting that on that card. I'm going to review it, and then I will repost the clean version to this teaching. All right? And clearly, we're still having problems with the internet here. Hopefully, hopefully, they promised me by next week they should have the thing fixed completely. So pray that that is fixed because the reason why you're not seeing me on as much as I would like to be on because of my internet issue. Having to do the pre-recording because even when I upload it, it takes forever. In fact, I had a 4K upload that took me two days to upload to YouTube. So please pray. Pray that God will fix my internet issues so that I can bring you more unadulterated truth. We're going to pick up hopefully tomorrow. I'd more than likely have to probably record it based on how things look because we're going to pick up on part two. Can someone, can someone hijack or steal your destiny? Can someone steal or hijack your blessings? The grace of God, we will be back today. I'm saying tomorrow, it's after 12, today. And we're going to bring back a part two that is going to go even deeper into the spiritual understanding of these things and how what you need to do if, if you feel that has happened to you and how to realign yourself. I was once that person that I'm praying and teaching to right now. I had no one, no preacher, no teacher to tell me these things. God in his anointing began to open my eyes and showed me the root of my problem. I was blaming everybody. I had no idea about the spiritual components. I was really pulling the strings to those that were doing their nonsense. I don't want you to be ignorant like that. And that is why I'm, I'm, I do it free of charge. I want you to get the knowledge. I want you to get it. I don't care if you're going to preach it in your church and, and you act like God give it to you. That don't matter to me. What matters to me is that those who need to hear it, hear it. And that through the knowledge of God, deliverance would be their portion. So until next time, may God bless you. May God keep you. May the God uh, shine his face upon you in the matches and the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.